Migraine is a complex brain disorder. The attacks are made up of effectively three big parts. The premonitory phase, the headache phase, and the post -drone. What we're learning from the premonitory symptoms are important pointers to fundamental aspects of the biology of the, of the attack. Now the premonitory symptoms, things like tiredness, uh, yawning, neck discomfort, discomfort, concentration problems, mood change, passing more urine or craving sweet or savoury things, are teaching us about brain areas that are active and engaged even before the headache begins. The premonitory symptoms can occur up to uh, hours or days even before the attacks and have been responsible for, I think, misleading us in a number of ways of understanding uh, the disorder. Some aspects of the premonitory symptoms are well understood if in a broad dopaminergic context. For example, uh, the yawning component of the premonitory phase is probably dopamine, uh, dopamine mediated. One interesting area where the premonitory symptoms are enlightening us is, is to understand some things about what have been called triggers. So a good example is during the premonitory phase, many patients will have photophobia, light sensitivity. Now many patients will also see that light, say that light triggers their attack. And what may be happening for some patients is they notice the light because of their premonitory photophobia and they go on and ascribe that as a trigger where it's actually the attack has started. So they're, they're making the right observation that after, lo after light sensitivity comes headache, but for the wrong uh, attribution. Another aspect of the premonitory symptoms, which is I think quite useful, is in clinical communication. If you understand that concentration problems, uh, tiredness, mood change are actually part of the natural biology of the attack, it helps the patient quite a lot when you can uh, explain that to them, explain to them that we're starting to understand that the brain regions, such as the hypothalamus that are involved, I think it enables patients to feel more relaxed about some of the symptoms that we probably haven't addressed terribly well in the past. Nitroglycerin has been used as a trigger uh, for migraine attacks for, um, in experimental sense for, uh, since the mid-1980s. The Copenhagen group really, um, re really refined the way of doing this. It's actually been known for a long time. It was first observed in dynamite factories that people exposed to nitroglycerin would, would develop headache, and that's over a century, um, a century ago. What nitroglycerin triggering is enabling us to do is to capture a migraine attack in a situation which is, if you could say, convenient. So, it's difficult with premonitory symptoms to get them into functional imaging or to do neurophysiology because they've already happened by the time the person comes along. A great advantage of triggering with nitroglycerin or even triggering with pituitary adenylate cyclase activating polypeptide, PACAP, is that you can prepare the technology that you're interested in and then trigger the symptomatology and observe it in a very controlled way.